Okay, this is part two on the NTI boilers, the T-series versus the TI series. So this is the uh, T-series, the first generation. And basically, this is the heart of the boiler, the heat exchanger. And the burner is actually around here on the side. That's the burner door. You have igniter and flame rod connections here. Up above is the blower and gas valve. This is the flue gas port. And you just, uh, they just had a no hub coupling that clamped onto there and the pipe went up through the top and that's all there was to the venting. Uh, the TI series, they definitely cleaned it up. Of course, this is a much newer boiler. They cleaned it up, kind of put the controls and the wiring and the uh, stuff here on the side, cleaned it up, put it under a cover. They moved the blower and gas valve down around to the bottom. And the air comes in the bottom port there. And then they put a little bit better connection on the top for the flu exhaust. Um, this configuration is nicer because it's easier to clean. You have better access to the burner and you can take the burner off and clean it all up. The disadvantage to this one is that when there's leakage, and there was leakage on this, all the water runs down in the gas valve and the blower and I've had blowers go out because they got wet. And you don't have that up here. It's all on top, so it's not as prone to water damage. So, um, what I want to talk about on these T-Series is basically the weak point of these T-Series boilers. Again, this is first generation. And the major problems we had with these is, as you can see, there's just corrosion and leakage all over the place. Down in the bottom, a lot of corrosion. And that's all from condensate leaking out, usually from this exhaust. And you can see how this has a gasket in it. Some of the very earlier models didn't even have a gasket in there. They just put some sort of sealant on it and screwed it down and called it good. And those almost all failed. This one, I think at one time, I did put the gasket in it. And so that helped seal up. And... Um, most of the leaks were coming from that silly thing. Uh, the other weak points are the fan switches. They had a couple of these real goofy little, what I call postage stamp switches. And they have hoses hooked to the, uh, the intake and the exhaust. And basically it was a fan proving switch so that it would tell the control that the fan was running before it would allow anything to fire up. This one, at some point, I replaced one of the switches with the type of switch that you see on the TI series. And they're a much better, bigger diaphragm. They're more sensitive. They work much better. So almost all the old T-Series I ended up replacing switches on. There's a little adjustment you have to make on these. And um, I can't remember how to adjust it. I'd have to, I'll get back to you on that. But there's an adjustment you can make so that it'll work with the T-Series. These, This one almost never has to be replaced. It's um, hooked to the, to the uh, air intake. And the only thing, only time that would ever come into play is if you had an air intake that was blocked. And it would have to create enough uh, negative pressure on there to uh, trip that switch. I don't think I've ever seen a boiler do that. So most of the time you don't have to worry about that switch. It's just this one hooked to the blower. There's a tube that goes up here to the blower. And uh, those are usually the ones that, uh, that fail. Um... They use the same controls, the fin wall ignition control, and this is called the sentry. The sentry, uh, that's the brains of the whole unit. You see the same thing in the TI. Same controls. 
Okay, so anyway, uh, the problem, the difficulty with these Giannoni heat exchangers is that they have to be cleaned. They recommend every couple of years. And to do that, in this one, you have to take off this side panel, and then you have to pull the bolts out of the blow or the burner door, disconnect the gas, disconnect the air, disconnect all the wires from the blower, and then you can pull that out from the side and get into the heat exchanger. It's a real pain. This one is much easier. You still have to connect or disconnect the gas which comes in the bottom of this one. And but there's it's much easier to uh, just unplug these wires. This is the igniter, this is the flame probe. Easy to replace or to pull those apart and then the blower pulls right out the front. Much easier to clean. So um, I have several of these TI still in service. I even have several of these T series in service. You know, they're getting around 15 years old and they're looking pretty worn and abused, but I they're still running. I just rebuilt a couple of them the other day. I've been warned by the local rep that parts are are going to get harder and harder to get. So, you know, the days are probably numbered on keeping these old T series working. Uh, TI still has some life in it. Like I said, this one was only about eight years old when we pulled it out because of a leaky heat exchanger. The only heat exchanger failure I've had in all the boilers, all the TI or T series boilers, uh, only one I've ever had fail. Of course, it was out of warranty, so uh, the boilers that we've been putting in lately are what they call the fire tube boilers, which is a totally different design of heat exchanger. Okay, so we're gonna pull, uh, pull, start pulling these apart and dissect them, and uh, you can see, you know, what the heat exchanger looks like, what the blower looks like, and all that stuff. So I'm gonna gradually pull these apart. Okay.